What's up? Welcome to Tales Tomorrow. I am Maro, your tiefling storyteller for today, and I got some juicy RPG horror stories for us to cover. So go ahead and uh, sit back, relax, let's get into the, uh, the horror. Can't we talk this out? Misadventures in the Feywild. Where do I even begin? A friend of mine was running a level 6 one-shot. The party consisted of me, Elf, Energy Magic Wizard, and two other friends, a fighter and a barbarian. The premise is that we ended up in the Feywild following an orphan girl that went missing and so we had to protect her while searching for a way out. Everything was smooth sailing, a couple of fun encounters, some environmental puzzles later and we get to the court of the Fairy Queen. This is where things got complicated. We found out that the several dozen people are held hostage because of the fairies feed on their dreams and the queen asked us to give up the girl and return home. Now, knowing how much the fairies can be eye holes, my first instinct was to fireball this shit out of her since there was no way of knowing whether or not she would actually let us out, and I asked my friends if they were okay with it. The fighter asked me to wait, since he wanted to make a deal with the queen. He proposed we should leave the girl temporarily and attempt to exchange the prisoners with people who deserve to be trapped in a Feywild forever. Since the queen happily accepted, I asked her if I could take the place of the orphan since our only goal from the beginning was to get her out of here. In that moment, the barbarian said IRL that he wants to make a stealth check to tie my hands and mouth and bring me out of the Feywild. It fails and the DM says we should probably roll for initiative and fighter makes clear that he is on a barbarian side. Start combat. But since I don't want to hurt them, I simply asked. Can't we tongue this out before being beaten into submission? Once we were out of the Feywild, I asked again why couldn't they let me stay there, to which they replied that I was just a, a valuable asset, which I think is just a stupid excuse. Anyway, the DM made it clear that since we never asked the Queen to tell us the truth, she was not going to respect Fighter's deal, we were locked out of the Feywild forever. One shot's over. Okay, hold on a second, the DM is also pulling some sort of things that why? Why you shut it down in one shot just for that? That's, I mean, yeah, I get player consequences and everything, but you can't make it that drastic. There has to be an alternate way out of it. It's like playing a video game, playing an RPG. We have to complete a quest in a specific way or else you fail it altogether and there's no way to reset it or progress it or get it back on track or so anything. That is the worst. I want to make clear that these two dickheads are still some of my closest friends and I'm not going to let D&D shenanigans influence what I think about them, but please, never start a fight without talking it out first. And I think that's the biggest problem here, there was no player communication. I feel like the OP should have been a little bit more clear saying, hey guys, listen, how about I put myself here temporarily as collateral and y'all can get me out later, you know? See if the players agree with it. If they agree, sure, move on with the plan. If they don't agree, don't go with the plan and just be like, okay, we'll think of a new plan together. I mean, seriously, this is one of those situations that could have been solved if they were to have a moment to talk. But they didn't, and everybody kind of jumped the gun. I found a store ran by a weird owner. Every now and then, you'll find a store that's been ran by a strange owner. This area was a small district and only a convenience store in the hobby place. I walked into the hobby store for my first and last time and found the place unkept. For example, things were scattered around the floor with one of the miniature paint containers being cracked open and spilled on the, thankfully not, carpet floor. It looked like it had been left there for months. The items were also priced horribly and they were way over the amount that you could normally get them for. I checked the gaming room next. It looked better with a nifty looking war game table that was decorated with various miniatures. The owner notices me, he's sitting at one of the tables playing Magic the Gathering, and introduces himself. He is this tall guy who looked like he would fit the role of a bouncer, but I introduce myself back and tell him that I'm here for D&D, and he agrees to sign me up once he's done with his match. Thankfully he's able to sign me up to the game on time and I start playing a bit of AL, Adventures League. The game has 6 players, including myself. And while the game was fun, what happened next made me uncomfortable. The owner is on the phone and is yelling at someone on the other line. This catches me off guard and I'm wondering what the argument is about. But as the time passes, he gets even angrier and makes threats of physical violence. My face turns to look at dread as the DM notices my discomfort and tells me that this happens almost every week. 
another person is chuckling at the owner's yelling tells me to relax because it's funny. The DM tries to, in vain, continue the game, but everything runs to a halt as we decide to wait for the argument to stop before continuing. Ten minutes pass, and there's no sign of the owner quieting down. So I got up and left. Yeah, it sounds like the owner is very chaotic, a little too chaotic. I mean, I don't know what happened. It Maybe there was something that happened beforehand. Maybe the place was robbed. You don't know exactly what's going down. You don't know what's happening. But if it's happening every week because the other players have said, then maybe the owner is just very chaotic and doesn't really know how to run a shop or maybe has aggression issues or something. I don't know, it seems like there's a lot of lore here, but I don't think the OP wants to stick around to find out. Which is a good thing, sometimes the lore for a place is not worth finding out anyway. So, yeah. Before you ask, I didn't get a refund, as I was nervous due to how unstable the owner seemed. Last thing I wanted was some hulking tall guy to flip out at me. I simply left the store and decided to eat out, while telling myself that I wouldn't go to any more unknown stores without looking up reviews. I later looked up the reviews for the place and found that it was sitting at 2 star rating. As it turns out, other customers had grievances with the owner for different reasons. There was even a review where a customer got a doll thrown at them due to a disagreement. I don't know if that place is still in business, but the owner probably drove the place under. Well, the owner sounds like they suck, and I'm sorry that was your experience going to the hobby store and everything, but I mean, listen, now you know to check on Google. I actually check all my places that I go to on Google, just in case, because you never really know what place you go into, especially if it's something that you never heard about. Toxic Insecure DM throws a fit when player quits game. I've been playing in an online game. Mistake number one, VL roll 20. Mistake number two, of D&D 5e. Mistake number three. I recently left that game after a falling out with the DM, who I had known for some time had a history of emotionally abusing his players. His response to my departure was very telling to myself and the other players about how insecure he is when he loses control of in any aspect of his games. I joined a game of 5e that promised a magical college setting similar to Strixhaven. The first session made it clear that it was not quite accurate, as the setting of the campaign more closely resembled a high school sitcom in a modern day setting, just with 5e stuff plastered all over it. I didn't have a problem with that, but I did immediately notice an issue with how the first session was run. It was almost entirely roleplay between the players and respectively close NPCs, portrayed by the DM. All the interactions had a hostile tone to them, despite none of us indicating this kind of relationship between PCs and NPCs. This would become a pattern as the game progressed. If all of your NPCs in the world are unfriendly to your players, of course your players are gonna think this place is unfriendly. Duh, doi. So, I mean, I feel like this DM is gonna ruin the campaign very fast. Over several sessions, the DM would frequently push the player characters into scenarios where he had absolute control over the circumstances, including what we as characters could choose to do. I thought this was just a clumsy way of railroading the story, but soon these engagements started happening out of character, as opposed to in character, and it became clear that the relationship we were expecting to have with our DM was a hierarchical one with him at the top. I wasn't the only one who noticed this. One of the other players, who I'll refer to as Sarah, spoke to me privately regarding not only her discomfort with the game, but also issues from a previous game she and the DM had shared that several people abandoned due to the latter being overly hostile in-game. She shared that he would frequently message her about the other players not role-playing the characters they pitched. I received no such complaint from him myself. But I did see the DM use our roleplay sessions to force my character into a specific role and archetype and made clear I was not interested in. This DM comes off as somebody that wants things to go a specific way every single time with no wiggle room whatsoever. Listen, it's fine to have a plan, but you're playing with players in a TTRPG, something I've learned and something many DMs will learn, that if you're playing a game in a TTRPG, your players are unpredictable and they will do what they want to do so a little bit of flexibility and understanding how to be flexible it's very important to keep the story rolling if you don't have that you don't have a story and then you're railroading the players into something that they don't even want to be involved in this was when things got bad the dm began to undercut the party during combat he kept information that we the players would logically need to know to roleplay and coordinate appropriately private 
and frequently chastised us for choices we made role-playing. Not for any state or reason, just due to the fact that he found what we were doing to be boring or uninteresting, despite the fact we were, as the players, were enjoying ourselves. The DM is actually gonna get on the players for not role-playing the way he wants them to? Your players will role-play the way they want to, because they have their own characters, their own character agencies, and they know and understand their character closely. You don't understand their character as much as they do, and if they choose to have the character help go through a change, whether like a personal storyline or something, that's up to them, not you, DM. He frequently would make passive-aggressive comments about us doing silly things in character and not following narrative paths he wanted, but didn't tell us to pursue. We were mocked for not picking up his unclear signals, kicked from calls for sassing him during games, held to account for jokes made out of character as if everything we said was a personal attack against him. These were soft methods of control he was using to guide our behavior in a dishonest and artificial way. The DM is being a complete and utter dickhead, being a control freak over a game of what? Make-believe? Game of improv? Not everything is gonna go by your plan, and things are not gonna happen the way you imagine them to. If you want them to, write a book. You're playing with other players, everybody is involved in a storyline, everybody's cooperating together to create a story. And if you don't like the way the story is going, well, either write a book or don't do it. The things that players choose to do, and they want to do, will affect how the story goes. And you as a DM need to make sure that you're on top of it, on top of your game, facilitating that, and making sure that you establish clear boundaries what players can do, what they cannot do, and give them plenty of leeway to do whatever they want to do. You can't just restrain the players and tell them what to do. I mean, what are you going to do? Give them a script? I mean, that's the best thing you could do. Just give your players a script. There we go. And every session, you have a players go through a script, and at that point, it becomes like a play. Hey, how about you just make a play? Make, write yourself a playwright instead of playing D&D. &D. Oh, I'm actually mad at this DM. I also learned from Sarah that he was committing outright emotional abuse to her in private. Screaming at her in private chats, implying that he has any disagreement with his conduct, was an attempt to armchair psychoanalyze him. He used very demeaning language regarding therapy in his context, and claiming that any request for space or time from her was equivalent to her abandoning him. I told her this sounded manipulative, and she agreed, but we both decided to stay involved for the sake of the other players. I mean, yeah, it is manipulative, and the one thing I should have done is call him out on that, and then leave. Because you know what? This is not worth it. Emotional abuse like this is not worth playing D&D. No D&D is better than bad D&D. And in this way, this is not even bad. This is outright atrocious. The players have to suffer the DM's emotional abuse because they either don't like the way they're joking or they're not saying the right thing or they're role-playing the same way. And then in the back line, Sarah, poor Sarah needs to be uh, dealing with more bullshit out of this DM because apparently the DM is yelling at her about, oh, you abandoned me. Don't abandon me. You know what? Fuck you, DM. Sarah should, every player should abandon you because you're absolutely fucking atrocious. Oh, I am mad. I'm a mad tiefling. Which leads us to yesterday. During a combat session, I attempted to cast a spell that had a cone effect with the specific in intention of hitting one target and not my allies. The DM, before I had shown where I was aiming, drew out what the spell would hit and began calculating damage. I objected, saying that I wanted to aim in the direction where the target was hit from an angle, not straight on, which isn't rules as written, but I had had experience with DMs allowing that in the past. The DM proceeds to move my character, draw a new line, and without offering any explanation on his ruling, said that was now what I was doing. This upset me, as I believe this was to be another form of him taking away my agency. He already explained how he ruled this after I got angry with him for moving my token and chose to speak down to me as if this was him offering me a solution, as an opposed to simply deciding what I was doing. I foolishly escalated, saying that I didn't appreciate the way he was speaking to me, and he proceeded to set me against the party, saying that if I really wanted to make my attacks as I originally had, he would reiterate against the rest of the group, and use that ruling aggressively against us in future fights. After taking a few moments to calm myself after this, I made my turn and let combat proceed. When the combat ended, roleplay began again, but I had moved away from the table to process my emotions. A few hours after the session ended, 
I sent a message in our Discord that I did not appreciate the controlling and emotionally manipulative methods the DM was using and felt as though my agency was being subverted. I left the group after that, blocked the DM on Discord to avoid him harassing me in chat, and thought that would be the end of it. And you know what? I hope everybody from the Discord does the same thing to the DM because the DM is being an abusive, manipulative, well, I don't even know what to call him, dickbag. That's a good one, dickbag. I like that. The next day though, Sarah messaged me again saying that my message had been deleted by the DM and replaced with message from him that I had said some fucked up shit and bailed overnight. He apparently also had been whining about me to her all night as well, though she only noticed in the morning. I learned later that he had sent me DMs on Roll20 that I did not see because I don't check my notification on Roll20, saying the entire group believed I was at fault and a burden on the game. Untrue, I spoke to the others and they at worst believed we were equally to blame. That my attempt to smear him would never work because he had more control over them than I did. Also untrue and irrelevant since I had not tied to do so, and that I should seek professional help. It takes a settlement at best. I also learned he had blamed my anger with him on me being transgender, likening me to other people who had left games on his before of similar reasons and asserting that must be why we were all unhinged. The DM is deflecting with something that has nothing to do with the accusation in the first place. The player decides to say, hey, you've been a manipulative, uh, controlling, kind of a mean asshat, and I'm out of the game because you suck. And the DM just goes, oh, it's because I'm trans, right? What? That had nothing to do with the story that was not even brought up at all. It's like the DM is using that as a shield just to be like, have a, find a reason. No, it's because you're a horrible, horrible DM that is manipulative, that is controlling, and that is making things worse for your players. You're creating a hostile environment where everybody feels like they're being constantly gaslit because you are gaslighting people and you're controlling people. You're emotionally abusing your players and that's not okay. Regardless of whether you're this or that, being a manipulative, controlling, emotionally abusive asshole is not okay. His message to me made it clear that he was trying to have the last word, as it were. He refused to let my words speak for themselves and messaged me privately that the players were on his side entirely, implying he had beaten me in some way. He spoke at length not about the issues I had, but about how my reactions must be indicative of several mental problems and I should seek help for my issues. I have a therapy regimen, FTR, and I find the use of therapy as a pejorative to be distasteful at best and hostile to mental health treatment at worst. I cannot help but see this as him insecurely holding on to his sense of power over me, asserting his place at the top of the hierarchy. It was petty and pathetic, especially for someone at least 10 years my senior. Yeah, the DM is clearly projecting. Also, I hope you save the screenshot because, I mean, if Sarah comes back figuring out like, hey, what, what's wrong, what happened? You can show the DMs and be like, hey, look at this dig bag putting me down because like, I, it says I have mental issues. What? What, what, what kind of DM, what kind of normal DM does that? What kind of normal person does that? Dude, that is so scummy and insulting. What the hell? Hey, DM, have maybe considered you were wrong? Have you considered that maybe it's your behavior and your action that is the pattern here? If it happens again and again and again and again, maybe you're wrong. It's like that one Simpsons meme. Maybe it's something I did. No, it's the kids that are at fault. Except that it's the players. Christ. Sarah had said that she's likely going to leave the game as well once she can confirm the other players are safe to talk to about this. I fully expect the DM to blame her for destroying his game, but I think if my words were enough to shatter people's faith in him as a DM, this is his fault, not mine. Good. Sarah should try to get out of this. This is an abusive relationship and it's terrible and every player should try to get out of this and it's a learning lesson for everyone. Recognize when the DM is being abusive, tell them no and get out. Just get yourself out of dodge and that's it. And with that, that's going to be all our stories for today. I want to thank you very much for watching and thanks so much for being here. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Also, if the RPG horror stories ever goes down or if you want to submit your own personalized horror story, email is down in the description below. I'll see you again in more Tales tomorrow. Bye-bye.